morning and happy Sabbath to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Maybe you realize that today is the last Sabbath of July and we are more than half of the year, 2021. And we are still in this kind of situation, COVID-19 pandemic, and it's still going on. And if we listen to the news, we hear a lot of things that is going on. We hear about Delta variant, and still people are getting sick and dying all over the world. Our church is still closed, but in spite of these things that are going on, we are here in this Holy Sabbath day that we can praise our Almighty God through this virtual worship. It is our privilege, and I can say that this is a blessing from our Heavenly Father. And now in this Holy Sabbath day, as we worship together in a cor as a corporate body, may we experience the solemnity of this Holy Sabbath day. May we experience the presence of His Holy Spirit. And now we are here to worship our Almighty God in His Spirit and in truth. And now, because we worship the Lord, Tithes and offering is part of our worship in this Sabbath day. William Miller was considered a madman when he put God first. Even then, he didn't give up. What can we learn from William Miller today to help us put God first in our own lives? He was a man of integrity who could not bring himself to believe the Bible to be true until an unexplainable event during his time at war shattered the way he looked at life. He asked himself, if the laws of nature are the only possible forces acting in the universe, how did I not die when the bomb exploded so close to me? He decided to start a deep study of scripture. Back at his farm in Whitehall, New York, Miller committed to reading and understanding the Bible, one verse at a time. This endeavor took him two years, 1816 to 1818 during which time he fell in love with his Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the most significant truths Miller found was the prophecy of the 2,300 evenings and mornings of Daniel 8.14. The prophecy predicted a significant event to take place about 1843 or 1844. He was compelled to share this knowledge with as many people as he could. However, as he was not a preacher, he did not feel himself skilled enough to do it as the Holy Spirit kept impressing him to tell others what he had discovered, he asked God to be abundantly clear in this calling. If someone asked him to share these findings, it would be a sign between him and God that he should do it. Less than an hour later, a family member arrived at the farm to ask him to share his findings. At first, Miller was upset because God had sent this invitation immediately. Then he decided to put God first, by doing his best with the limited skills he thought he had. His preaching led to a nationwide revival. Hundreds of thousands of people left all worldly things behind, preparing for Jesus' second coming. They were expecting Jesus to return on October 22, 1844, but Jesus didn't. Instead, he started his ministry in the most holy place, in the heavenly sanctuary. It was from this disappointment that God called the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, Seventh-day Adventists are preaching the good news of the soon coming of Jesus in more than 200 countries. Millions of people are now hopeful because Miller chose to put God first, sacrificing all and following duty instead of inclination. William Miller put God first, even when he was laughed at. His courage inspires us today. Jesus gave up everything to redeem us, and his love compels us to put his kingdom first in our own lives. 
As we return our tithes and promise, we are challenged to put God first. We are so blessed today because we have a speaker from Bramali Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church and at the same time a pastor of Kitchener Church. Our speaker for today is no other than Pastor Jess Anunciacion. So let me read this text that is found in Psalm 61 verses 1 to 8. It says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life, his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. To open up our worship, let us sing Standing on the Promises on hymn number 518. 518. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, God in heaven, what a wonderful day we have again today to be with you, to praise you, to worship you, to glorify you, and to thank you for everything that we have. Lord, before anything else, please cleanse my heart and show me if there is any unconfessed sin in my own life so that my prayer will not be hindered. I thank you that through your name, I can boldly before you and pray with confidence according to your will and know that you hear me. I leave up to you each and every one of us to deepen our love for you and for the people around us. May we always desire to serve you faithfully at all costs. Help us to exemplify your values and make us bold in our faith. And may our love for you help us to love and forgive others and make a difference in our world. 
with or without pandemic. Please send us your comfort, your peace, your calming presence. Remembering those who are sick and not in good physical condition. Lord, please come with them. Touch them with your powerful healing so that their health will be back to normal and can serve you again effectively. We pray for our church. May we come before God with humility and willingness to obey. May we seek God first, putting aside our own desires. May we become intercessors for our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we pray more and criticize less. May we be encouragers and uplifters. And now, O oh Lord, please be with our speaker. Pastor Jess Anunciation. We pray that you would give him great inspiration as he share with us what you have placed on his heart. Thank you so much, Father, for this wonderful day. Thank you for listening and answering our prayer with the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Sabbath boys and girls, my name is Atilean, and our story for today will be based on Matthew 14 verses 22 to 23. Please watch the following video carefully. Stories of the Bible. Peter walks on water. This is Peter. Hey Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey. Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus. Whoa! And he heard all his teachings. Great crowds followed Jesus wherever he went. One day after Jesus had done a great miracle, he sent the disciples in a boat across the lake while he stayed and sent the people home. See ya! Hey, Jesus! After sending them home, Jesus went up into the hills by himself to pray. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Ah! About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. Ah! In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! Hold on there. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Hmm. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. So Jesus said, yes, come. So Peter went over the side of the boat. Whoa, you're awesome. And walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, ah! ah! he was terrified and began to sink. Peter, help me! Save me, Lord! He shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Jesus said, You have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him and said, you really are the Son of God. Now, what did we learn from the story? 
Look to Jesus and have faith in him. He will help you conquer anything. Not even the storm or the big waves can stop you. With God, all things are possible. But without him, we can do nothing. Don't doubt just like Peter did, according to Hebrews 11 verses 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, how wonderful it is to have another Sabbath day to worship you with our family and friends. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful story of faith. May the kids learn more about you each and every day. And may their lives be as fruitful as can be. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening, kids. And I hope this story inspires you to face anything with courage and valiant faith. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Greeting the faithful, Simon Peter, Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust bless us today as we study and listen to his word <music>
morning to our brothers and sisters here at Fair Heaven Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, I am grateful for the privilege to be joining you in your worship service today. I'd like to thank Pastor Agol for the invitation. And of course, I bring you greetings from uh, my beloved wife and our children, and also from the two churches where we are serving right now, the Bramali Filkan Church and the Waterloo Region Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are truly uh, grateful that even though we belong to different local churches, but in reality and in truth, we are all together in the same body of Jesus Christ. One church, one faith, one Lord, one Savior. And so today I'd like to present to you a message that the Lord has impressed upon me. And I'd like to share my screen now to every one of you. Uh, the message is entitled, Knowledge Equals Power. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we now go into the study of your words, we ask that your Holy Spirit, O oh God, will uh, fill us with his presence and that he will guide us into all truth and will allow us to see Jesus for who he is. Bless us now, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So knowledge. See, how many years uh, did you uh, spend in school? 15 years, 16 years, eight years of uh, primary schooling, four years of secondary schooling, that's 12, and another four years of uh, uh, sec uh, tertiary education. For some of you, you have done your master's. So for many, if not all of us, we have spent at least 16 years of our lives in classrooms. You know, we are supposed to accumulate knowledge as we go through life because, you know, knowledge is our way of uh, being able to advance in our, you know, life in this world. And that's why there's, uh, uh, there's a saying that goes like this, you know, knowledge is power. And Sir Francis Bacon is uh, given the credit for, you know, this particular saying, 1597. He says, knowledge itself is power. He most likely wanted to transmit the idea that having and sharing knowledge is the cornerstone of reputation and influence and therefore power. All achievements emanate from this. So there is power in knowledge. In the world that we live in right now, we are bombarded with uh, information. You know, we look into social media and we see all sorts of uh, information, all sorts of knowledge, all sorts of uh, news purporting to be truth. But if we are not careful, we might fall prey to believing uh, news that are less than truth or fake news. And that's why as God's people, we have to be able to you know, be, be, uh, be aware and be founded on what is truth and what is not truth. We need to be able to, you know, to allow for information to uh, come into us according to what is always truth. Paul speaks to uh, the church in Rome, in Romans chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. And he speaks towards the situation of his fellow Israelites, his fellow Jews. He says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. This is the heart of Paul. You see, he was called to be a, uh, a gospel preacher to the Gentiles. In fact, he spent... Uh, half of his life in missionary activity, preaching God's word to the Gentiles. But whenever he would be visiting a particular place or a particular city, the first place that he sets uh, his feet into is the synagogue of the Jews. He would never set aside 
ministry for the Jews. He loves his fellow Jews. Although he was at the receiving end of so many unfair and uh, unfair treatment and injustices coming from his fellow Jews, yet God's love uh, uh, was there in the heart of Paul for his fellow Jews. And so he says, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. How often do you find yourself, do I find myself praying for the salvation of those who are dear to us, and those of our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors? You know, God has brought us to be a part of their lives so that just like Paul, we could be instruments at least in praying for their salvation. Verse 2, Paul says, For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. You see, we all know the, you know, the mindset of uh, the Jewish people during the New Testament time. You know, they were very religious. Uh, they were, they were uh, number one in keeping the laws of Moses. In fact, they even accused Jesus of breaking the laws of Moses. But of course, they have a warped understanding of the truth of the laws as given to them by Moses and by the laws and the prophets. And that's why they, they never really came to understand the God whom they claim to be worshiping. Jesus came into their midst and they did not see Jesus for who he is. They have a zeal for God. You know, they were very religious. They were so strong in, in, the, in the rituals of their religions. But sadly, they never really experienced what that religion is supposed to bring to them. What those rituals are supposed to, uh, to, to uh, be a blessing to connect them with, with the God whom they serve. And so Paul says they have a knowledge. But their knowledge is not based on truth. So we are bombarded with so much information uh, in our world today. Sometimes it is hard to know where what is what is truth and what is error. So many fake news uh, that abounds in social media. We have to be careful. Let us not just share anything that we see in social media. We have to fact check everything. It's quite easy to fact check. Just go to the very source of, uh, of information. If it's information about health, go to the, uh, to the source of health. Don't just go into some website which pertains to be, telling, uh, to be telling the truth about how we should be taking care of our health, especially during this time of pandemic. So the section of our study for today is actually in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And I'm going to be reading this from the New King James Version. Simon Peter, a bond servant, apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's so many uh, important uh, uh, matters that we need to uh, uncover in this uh, short section of this part of uh, Peter's letter to, uh, to the saints uh, there during his generation. And uh, we will be looking into, first of all, faith. Faith, according to Peter, is obtained and precious. One, one, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So you are here today worshiping because you yourself have obtained this faith. You would not be here if in the first place, there is no faith within you. So as we all know that uh, faith is uh, a gift coming from God. 
This is how faith progresses in our lives. Number one, we believe, we understand that faith is a gift. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Yes, the faith that comes through him, this is part of the sermon of uh, Peter during Pentecost. He tells the people that faith is something that uh, we can never generate on our own. No, faith is planted by God upon our hearts. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the writer, the author says, looking to Jesus, the author of faith. And so I am not the author of faith. You're not the author of faith. Only Jesus is the source and giver of faith. And so if you have faith right now, and I am quite certain that you are a people of faith, because this is evidenced by your, your worshipful attitude, you know, your joy whenever you congregate together, whenever you do the works of God. This is all because of the faith that God has planted in our hearts. You know, where did this faith come from? It came from God, and God used His Word, the Bible, to plant this faith in your heart and my heart in our lives. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, so then faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's why we can never really uh, discount the power of God's word. If we want to receive this gift of faith, then we have a part. Our part, the human part, is to open ourselves to be the recipients of this faith. And the way we receive faith is by opening the pages of scripture, reading from the scripture, and asking God, asking God to bring and to give the faith that he has promised to each one of us who are opening ourselves to him. So if we would want faith to continue to be nurtured, if you want your faith to continue to grow, you know, my best suggestion, my best advice is to continue to feed on God's word. Now, we will not be uh, depending on Sabbath morning during our Sabbath school time, nor on the uh, time when we are seated at the pews listening to the proclamation of God's word. Those are important elements in building our faith, but nothing could replace our one-on-one -on -one connection with God, with Jesus, through our personal Bible study, through our personal Bible reading, devotional time. And this is how God is continually able to reach out to us. When we open our Bibles, we are supposed to see Jesus. Because this is the revelation of Jesus Christ upon each one of us. And so as we see Jesus, we grow in our relationship, in our connection with him. Through our Bible study, we will never really grow in our personal relationship with Jesus if we only rely upon what is spoon-fed to us during the Sabbath hours. Those are important. I'm not saying that we should not uh, be attending Sabbath school. No, we need to attend. This is God's way of continually uh, bringing us to himself. But more importantly, we need to connect with God on a one-on-one -on -one basis, individual basis, through his word and through prayer. And faith, of course, is based on the truth of God's revelation in Christ Jesus. This is our passage. Verse 1, to those who obtain like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God, and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is the revelation of God's character. He is the embodiment of truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so for, for faith to continually be built up in our lives, you know, we need to know Jesus according to the truth of scriptures. By the way, Christianity is the only religion in the world that is based on a personal relationship with the author of the textbook that we are reading. You know, go into other religions, 
other religions, they are not able to connect personally with the authors of the books from which the religions are based. You know what I mean. In Christianity, we are supposed to connect personally with the author, with Jesus Christ, with the truth that is in him. And faith must be exercised. Luke 8, 25, but he said to them, where is your faith? You see, if we only proclaim that we have faith, if we, if we declare that we have faith, but we don't actually live out that faith, uh, we don't pursue faith, we don't live according to the truth that God has given us in scriptures, then, you know, this is what James refers to as, you know, fake faith. If there's fake news, there's also fake faith. Faith that is genuine, that is based on the truth as it is in Jesus Christ, would be evidenced by our submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This is the faith that is seen, faith that works, that James speaks about. And so faith must be exercised. Faith must, faith must be lived out. You know, if we don't use our muscles, what happens to the muscles? If we just lounge around all day, if we sit around, we don't do anything, what happens to our muscles? It gets atrophied. You know, we become weaker and weaker and weaker until we are not able to do things anymore because we don't use them. In the same way, we need to use our faith. So faith is embodied in the truth as is in Christ Jesus Christ. Peter says, verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. So as we continue on in our relationship with Jesus Christ, as we allow Jesus Christ to come to us through his word and through the Holy Spirit, this is what knowing Jesus Christ is all about. Peter is telling us that grace, grace, and peace will not only be added unto us, but it will multiply upon us according to the proportion of our knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And so the more we focus on Jesus in, in our life, as we focus on knowing Jesus in our Bible reading, as we focus on Jesus, as we worship, as we focus on Jesus, as we serve with the talents that he has given us in the church, as we focus on Jesus, as we conduct community services and evangelism in our church, the promise is that God's grace, abundant and free, and his peace that passeth understanding will be multiplied upon us. This is the beauty of uh, our growth in knowledge. And that's why we need to continue to grow in our knowledge of our God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we have a part in this uh, transformation. Our part is to spend time in getting to know God day after day. And as we spend time with him in his word and through the scriptures, and through the Holy Spirit, he would abundantly supply us with grace and with peace. So grace is God's unmerited favor, according to an author. No, grace is his saving work in our lives. Grace is the reason why you are still here in this world right now. No, God's grace is everything. Uh, it sums up uh, the, 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 the fullness of God's blessings upon each one of us. And as we continue to connect with God day after day, you know, filling our thoughts with uh, the words of scripture and the truth that is in Christ Jesus, you know, he dispenses peace upon us. Peace that is, uh, that is uh, unlike any uh, thing that uh, this world can offer us. 
This is the peace that transcends all understanding that Paul uh, writes about. You know, in the midst of uh, so many calamities that are in this world right now, you know, Canada, Canada is not uh, exempted from all of these calamities. There are places in Canada right now where fires, uh, forest fires are burning uncontrollably. Uh, there, is, uh, th there, are, there are natural calamities. What happened in Barrie uh, uh, several weeks ago? You know, uh, uh, I know someone who lives in Barrie and I'm happy. I'm grateful that he was not among those who was, uh, who was affected by uh, this uh, tornado. And we are still living in the midst of this pandemic. I hope that in the midst of all of these things, that you have the peace of God. The peace of God which he has promised as we continue to receive a knowledge of truth based on scriptures that is given to us. And so first, second Peter chapter one, verse three, he goes on to say, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Again, Peter speaks about the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. And so we, that we, we don't only receive uh, grace and peace, but Peter sums, sums up everything that we need for life, for life and godliness, all things. That means that uh, there's no exception. If, uh, if God places you in a particular situation where you're going through difficulties and tribulations, you can claim this promise. This is already a given uh, truth for each one of us. Divine power has been given to all of us, says all things that pertain to life and godliness. You know, when Peter speaks about all things, of course, it includes all things that pertains to life, food, shelter, clothing. We are so familiar with Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Jesus Christ says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, that's in verse 33. And uh, uh, he, he, he speaks about uh, don't, uh, but not worrying about what you will be wearing or what you will be eating or drinking. God knows everything. Just continue to focus on Jesus Christ. Spend time with him. Receive the knowledge of God. That God would want you to receive. And God will take care of your needs abundantly. He will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. All things that pertain to life. And all things that pertain to godliness. You know, godliness is uh, a characteristic that God would want to infuse upon each one of us. You know, godliness pertains to godly relationships. You know, God will, uh, will enable you to, to connect with others in, in a way by which there would, be, there would be growth between you and the other person in your relationship with one another, in your relationship with God. You would be able to manifest and bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. As you connect with Jesus, you are connecting with the vine. And when the branch is connected with the vine, you know, the, the, the branch is able to bear the fruit of the vine. You know, it's not the fruit of the branch, but it's the fruit of the vine which the branch is able to bear. So all things that pertain to life, if, if you are not enjoying godly relationships with others right now, then think thoroughly about this. Perhaps you are not growing in knowledge of Jesus Christ in your life. Knowledge is power. If you would want God's power to flow through you, then get to know Jesus even more. Spend more time with him. Connect with him. And then see how God would be able to improve the quality of your relationship 
with one another. It could be your wife, it could be your husband, they could be your children or your parents. They could be members of the church. We are supposed to have godly relationships with one another. If there is unforgiveness among us, God will not be able to totally bless us. If there's division in our needs, God will not be able to pour out his blessings as much as he would want to. It all begins with our willingness to connect with God, Jesus Christ, and to obtain the knowledge of Jesus Christ and to grow in Jesus Christ. One four, he says, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is so powerful because you see, when we were born into this world, we were born with the nature of sin. This was the nature that was passed down to us through Adam and Eve. But by the grace of God, when Jesus revealed himself to us, we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. We went down into the water grave of baptism. And when we accepted Jesus Christ, we were infused with the Holy Spirit. We became the habitation of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit if we are in Christ Jesus. And through the Holy Spirit, we become partakers of his divine nature. And so God's holy word, the scriptures, the Bible, as we partake of uh, God's word, God's word dwells upon us richly. And the Holy Spirit dwells upon us as well. And that's why through God's word and through the Holy Spirit, we are able to partake of the very nature of God upon each one of us. And this is the only way by which we would be able to escape the corruption that is in the world. God would want us to give victory to overcome whatever, whatever challenges, whatever temptation, whatever darling sins that we may still be clinging on to. Come to Jesus. Draw power from him. Continually receive his word in your life. And the divine nature will be manifested more and more. As we go through the journey through life. And that's why we are able to you know, enjoy godly relationships in our own homes. You see, it has to start in our own homes. Husbands and wives, parents and children. You know, if there's no godly relationships among us, how can we be able to impact the lives of others outside of our own home? But it has to begin with an understanding. That we need more of God's word. We need more of God's spirit upon each one of us so that God's own nature may be seen, may be manifested, and that he will be able to bear his fruit, the fruit of the spirit upon each one of us. So this is the progression, the power of the divine nature in us. Knowing God as the author of faith, he gives us faith. Faith comes from him. Receiving the gift of faith through his word. And exercising faith by trusting in him and his promises. He has given us, he has given us so much wonderful promises in the Bible. Let us claim all of these promises. Those promises are there for a purpose. God wants you to claim his word, claim his promise. Sometimes he will not uh, give us an answer to what we are praying for. But we still need to trust him because we know that he is infinitely more wise than each one of us. We just need to trust him. If we, if we, if we uh, pray for healing, we may not experience the healing of the body that we want. But we can always be sure that he has given us and that we will continue to give us healing of the soul. Because God's ultimate purpose is not for us to live in this world, in this decaying body forever. You know, this decayed body will turn into dust one of these days. But God's purpose in giving us his son, his word, and his promises is so that we could enjoy living in an immortal, glorified body which he will be giving to us one of these days when Jesus Christ comes again. And so we need to continue to trust him 
in the midst of whatever difficult situation that you may be going through right now, trust God. This is what faith is all about. Faith is trusting God even though we may not uh, receive what we are in fact asking for. Trusting God in the midst of pain, in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of trouble. Believing that God loves you and be believing that he will never leave you even though you may not feel him because faith is not about our feelings. Faith is about the truth that is embodied already in Jesus Christ. You know, God loves us more than we can truly, fully understand. And Jesus already showed the magnitude of that love when he died there on the cross. And so even though you may not feel love because you are going through so much suffering, you know, it is Satan who is whispering in your heart, in your ears, that perhaps God does not love you because he is not answering your prayers. Faith is about Believing that Jesus loves you in the midst of your greatest pain, in the midst of your greatest suffering, continue to live that faith. Trust Jesus. He knows what is best. And he will give deliverance upon each one of us who will continue to put our trust and faith in him. A knowledge of Jesus based on the truth of his word, leads to a powerful life. No worries, no stress, no problems too big for the Lord to be able to handle. No fear of the unknown, because Christ is known. Power to live the sanctified, set-apart life for Christ. And so when Peter speaks about power, this is the power that is made available for us. You see, stress is the number one killer in the world right now. You know, stress would, would uh, bring havoc into the different organs of the human body if it will not be controlled. Worry, Jesus Christ says, will not add uh, an inch to your life, an hour to your life. And so instead of stressing, instead of worrying, why not? Continue to focus and to dwell on who God is as revealed to us by Jesus Christ. Why not trust him and trust to him everything, every care, every concern. Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you, Peter says, First Peter chapter 5. You know, we don't have uh, an idea of what's going to happen in terms of this pandemic. You know, we thought that it was already easing, but now because of the Delta variant, people are getting affected once again. Fear of the unknown. But we can continue to believe that God is in full control over the affairs, over the things that are happening in this world. We don't have to fear the unknown because Christ is known to you and me. This is the power for living that Christ is giving to us. And of course, power to live the sanctified life. Power to live to be able to bear the fruit of the Spirit. To be loving, to be kind, to be generous, to be in peace, to be able to forgive even those who are not, who are not uh, worthy of your forgiveness. This is what the sanctified life is all about. This is what bearing the fruit of the Spirit is all about. And so my brother, my sister, God is calling us to a powerful life. And I hope and I pray that as we continue to focus on God's word, focus on Jesus, focus on his promises, that faith will continually be built up in our lives and that faith will be seen, will be evidenced in the kind of life that we live for him. Amen. To close our worship, let us sing, My Faith looks up to be on hymn number 517, 517.
Jesus Christ, the presence of the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever, and everyone will say, Amen. Are you in need of a prayer? We can help. Just send us an email using the email address shown below with your name and a phone number that we can reach and we would be glad to pray with you.